Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of the .NET Show, I'll show you how to add a web browser control to your WPF application. Historically, this has been difficult to achieve due to barriers like permission settings and COM interop details. Now we have a relatively new control called Microsoft Edge WebView 2, which was introduced in May of 2020. WebView 2 allows you to embed web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, in your native apps. It uses Microsoft Edge as the rendering engine to display the web content. With WebView 2, you can embed web code in different parts of your native app, or build all of the native app with a single WebView 2 instance. WebView 2 in WPF is coming right up on the .NET Show. All right, I'm going to start with a little overview of the WebView 2 class or control that you can use in WPF. Right from the documentation, which, by the way, I have created a shortcut to webview2.the.netshow.com. So let's do a little reading. This control is effectively a wrapper around the WebView 2 COM API. You can directly access the underlying iCore WebView 2 interface and all of its functionality by accessing the core web view to property. And some of the most common com functionality is also accessible directly through the wrapper methods, properties, events on the control. So in other words, core web view two is the big one. All right. This is essentially edge. It's a uh, edges web control, essentially. Upon creation, the controls core web view two property will be null. This is because creating it is an expensive operation, which involves things like launching edge browser processes. And there are two ways to cause this core web view two to be created. Well, the easiest one is the second one. You set the source property. You could do that from markup, or you could do it explicitly in code. And this is referred to as an implicit initialization. But you can also do it explicitly if you want to do it beforehand by calling ensure core web view to async. And if you take a look down here, because the controls core web view to is a very heavyweight object, potentially responsible for multiple running processes and megabytes of disk space, the control implements iDisposable to provide an explicit means to free it. All right, so there's more stuff here, but needless to say, the general idea is that this core web view to represents the underlying com object and edge and the processes and disk space and all of those resources uh, that edge uses. And if you don't mind waiting a little bit when you set the source property, you could just set the source property. But if you want to do it ahead of time, you can call ensure core web view to async. All right. And you probably also want to dispose it unless you're only using one instance of it like we are going to and it will get disposed when the application exits. All right, enough of that. So I've got a .NET 7 WPF app here. Then if you look at the csproj file, you can see the output type is win.exe. Target framework is .NET 7 Windows, so it's Windows specific because it's WPF app. Use WPF true. This is the default. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is change my app XAML CS file because I want global usings. Now I've got global usings for stuff that I'm going to be using in this demo, including this Microsoft Web WebView 2 core, which I don't have a reference to yet. So let's fix that. Here we go. So you can just go to your new yet package manager and get Microsoft.web.webview2. Now that we have that, let's update our main Windows XAML. There. I don't really care about the view here. I just want to show you the markup. So a couple things we did. We added this namespace right here, WV2, but you can call it whatever you want. And this is the Microsoft.web.webview.wpf namespace with the same assembly. This is right out of the documentation. I've set the title 
the height and the width and the window startup location. And now I've changed the grid to a dock panel and I've got my web view control with the name web view and the source property. And there it is. So this is my band web page. Yep, I'm in a 10 piece Steely Dan tribute band. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to show you. This is the canonical example of doing what is essentially a web browser application. And the, the samples in the documentation, that's what they do. They show you how to do everything that a web browser does. But that's not what I want to do. I want to use this control for a very specific purpose. I want to show a YouTube video when we click a button. Why? Well, the scenario I'm thinking of is one of video help, right? You have a WPF application, and rather than pulling up a help file, you want a video to show. And then when you're done, you want the video to go away. So in this case, the video isn't a help file, but it is actually helpful to you. It's going to be on YouTube. And the way I want to do it is rather than just putting the URL to the YouTube page, I want to embed it in my own HTML file, which I'll create right now. So I'm going to add a file called youtube.html. So this is a very simple HTML file that I'm going to load explicitly. It's very simple. It just has a body and an iframe for embedding a YouTube video. And I got this right off of YouTube. So you have your YouTube video, you click share, and one of the options is embed. And it gives you basically the source for an iframe. Now I want it to automatically play. So autoplay equals one here, and autoplay is allowed. But you also have to do this. It has to be muted if you're going to autoplay. I think YouTube got hip to the point where people were having their videos automatically play when you go to a website, and that is just not good netiquette, is it? No. I wouldn't do that to anyone. So now it's a rule. It won't autoplay unless it's also muted. Now, of course, when I click on this, I have to set the copy to output directory property to copy if newer. But you knew that. That's old stuff. Okay, now let's update our main window. And here's what we have. Our dock panel now has a stack panel in it with one button, show video button, which is aligned left and top. That's what it looks like. Now I also have my web view two on the right. So that vertical alignment is top, horizontal alignment is right. So the idea is when I click the button, I want to show the video. Okay. So let's add the code behind for this click. So I've taken out all of those using statements because I have global usings now. And in my show video button, I'm going to look in the current directory for YouTube HTML. And if that file exists, I'm going to set the source to a URI, which is a file URI with that file name. Okay. Show video. There it is. So this is a Blazor Train video that I did that shows you how to do a WPF application written in Blazor using the WebView2 control. So if you want to do your whole UI in Blazor, check out this video. It's on Blazor Train. Now, of course, I can unmute it. It'd still be cooler than the crappy beer being served in the cafe car. But I'm going to take this demo as far as I can go. We'll not only do JavaScript interop, but interop between Blazor and Windows. And that's all coming right up. Right. Okay, so you get the idea. So now let me show you some other things we can do. I'm going to add another button here. Call JavaScript. And when we click this button, we're going to make a JavaScript call in the web view. So let's add the code behind. Now to do this, we're using core web view two, which has already been created because we've set the source, right? By this time, more on that in a minute, but we're going to call execute script async. And I'm going to call a function show message with the current time. So let's add that script. Now this could be anything, right? 
This is just a demo. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more interesting JavaScript that you can call, but you get the idea. So I'll show the video. Video loads. Call JavaScript. There it is. The time is blah, blah, blah. Now, here's a problem. What if we call JavaScript before the core has been created? Well, you got it. Core Web View 2 is null. So we're going to do something about that. What I'd like to do is disable the button until that core web view is not null. Well, what is that? Well, we'll figure that out. I want this enabled property to be bound to a field somewhere. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set is enabled to binding JavaScript button enabled. So this has got to be a Boolean on the default data context. So let's modify the code behind to support this. All right, now there's a lot of stuff here. Yes, I have my JavaScript button enabled Boolean, but I've also implemented I notify property changed, which gives me this event, property changed event handler. I had to set the data context to this so that the Boolean can be exposed. And I'm handling the navigation completed event. And this happens after everything has been done and your source has been loaded. So I know that the core web view two is there and not null. So in navigation complete, I set JavaScript button enabled to true and I set the property changed. And now by the time this button gets clicked, core web view two will not be null. Now you see, call JavaScript button is disabled. Now I can show the video and it becomes enabled. Good, huh? Well, what else can we do? There's a ton of things we can do, and I'll give you a list in a minute. But one of the cooler things is that I can take a screenshot of the WebView 2 control. Whatever is being shown in it, I can take a screenshot and save that to a stream. In this case, it'll be a file on my desktop. So let's first add the button. So the button name is take screenshot. I'm using that same JavaScript button enabled, which now, I might consider renaming because it's not just the JavaScript button. It should be something like core web view two loaded or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to call take screenshot click when you click it. So let's add that. So I'm opening a file on my desktop called capture.jpg. And from that, I get the file stream to that image. And then I can use web view core web view two capture preview async with a format JPEG and pass the stream. Let's get it someplace interesting like here and then take a screenshot. And there it is. Now, what are some of the other things we can do? Well, I'll tell you what you do need to see some documentation here. So this is where I'm going to leave the code for you. Right here, navigation completed, I've got a link to the documentation. Now remember, core web view 2 is where all of the properties, methods, events, and all that stuff are, but some of them are exposed through web view 2. But these are the ones that core web view 2 exposes that I think merit a little explanation. Contains full screen element, Boolean, the browser process ID, the cookie manager, which lets you read, add, update, copy, and delete cookies, the document title, the environment, which has the browser version string and the user data folder, the save icon URI, some booleans here, is default download dialog open, is document playing audio, is muted, is suspended, and the profile has the profile name, the file download location, the profile path, private mode and color scheme. Settings has the following. Our browser accelerator keys enabled. Our default context menus enabled. Our default script dialogues enabled. Our dev tools enabled. Yeah, that's another thing. You can actually use the dev tools. Our host objects allowed. Hidden PDF toolbar items. Is built-in error page enabled? 
Is general autofill enabled? Is password autosave enabled? Is pinch zoom enabled? Is script enabled? Is status bar enabled? Is swipe navigation enabled? Is web message enabled? Talk about that in a second. Is zoom control enabled? And user agent. And then finally, the status bar text. Those are all things that you can examine. Now, if you go to webviewstart.the.netshow.com, that'll link to this. So getting started with WebView 2 and WPF apps is a good start. Now, there's one thing they talk about down here, communication between host and web content. So the host, which is your WPF app, and the web content can communicate using post message. Web content in the control can post a message to the host using window.chrome.webview.postmessage. So the host handles the message using any uh, registered web message received event handler. The host can post messages to the web content in the control using core web view to post web messages string or post web messages JSON. And those are caught by handlers added to window Chrome web view add event listener in JavaScript. So this is just a way that you can go back and forth between JavaScript in your app in the web view too and your WPF app. So that's cool. This is all good stuff and there's lots of new things to learn. So have a good time doing it and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.